I'm often asked about books that I love for my kids, and so I thought I'd make a little video showing some of our favorites over the years. So I'm gonna start off with board books that have the thicker pages for little hands, um, and then move into some of the longer stories that may take, you know, 10, 15 minutes to read. So um, here are some of our favorites. Book. Oh, ew. Is it a bug, Ivy? This book is the little book of backyard bird songs and our boys loved this. It was a Christmas gift last year. I tell the favorites because the spines are worn, the pages are worn, they've been used a lot. This one has been a favorite with all three of my kids. peek hoo it's cute, you turn the pages. peek hoo peek a moo peek a boo What's this one? Pika. Moo. Moo. That one's actually Pika Zoo. These by Eric Carle are some more favorites. Brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? I see a red bird looking at me. Red bird, what do you see? I see a yellow duck looking at me. This was fun for them and helped out with learning their colors. So that was a fun one. And then this one is polar bear, what do you hear? And it's just different animals and talking about their sounds and things. So that was another favorite. This is one from Ben's mom. God bless you and good night. I love the illustrations in this. They're really, really sweet and fun. There's another one from Ben's mom, Grandma's Kitchen. It's a fun little story about baking in Grandma's Kitchen and making cookies together. And this has been a favorite. Like we literally have this one memorized because Henry would pick this one like every single day, sometimes three times a day. So that one's sweet. What's this, Ivy? The Preschool Prep Letters Book. This is fun because they're lift to flap and they have little characters with each, with each letter. And our kids have watched the Preschool Prep videos. And so they loved watching these, almost using it like flashcards. They would go through and say all the letter names and the sounds. So this has been a fun one. Okay. Little Blue Truck, such a fun classic. This was Spurgeon and Henry's favorite when they were Ivy's age, just a little over a year old, just obsessed with this book. Horn went beep, engine purred, friendliest sound you ever heard. Just absolutely adorable. The illustrations so darling and sweet. A fun little story about a dump truck who didn't have time for any of the farm animals, but then when the dump truck was in trouble, all the animals in Little Blue Truck came to the rescue. Here's another favorite, Big Red Barn. This one we've had since Spurgeon was probably a baby and super fun. By the big red barn in the great green field, there was a pink pig who was learning to squeal. You just get to go through the farm and see all the different animals. And this has been another favorite. Ivy loves this one currently. We're going on a bear hunt. It follows a family on their journey to go find a bear. And so they have to go through all of these different types of terrain in order to find the bear. And then when they finally reach the cave. What's that? It's a bear. <laughs> this has always been a favorite. And then they run back home and they shut the door and they climb in bed and we're not going on a bear hunt again. This one is just darling. This is another one that Henry has loved. Just shows mom animals, baby animals as they're cuddling down for bedtime and just a really sweet bedtime story. Those are some of the favorite board books. And now I'm gonna show you some of the other longer reads that the boys love. This is a fun story that Ben's mom gave the boys. And it's about these beautiful horses and then this pony. And the pony ends up coming and rescuing the children and then becomes a favorite with the people in the town. And so this is a fun story. This is a newer favorite and the title is Home in the Woods. And it's about a family who lost their father and was just trying to make a go at life during the Great Depression. And so it tells that they're finding a new home out in the woods and cleaning up and the struggles of having to find food and um, going without some things. It just highlights the beauty of a family making do with what they have. And this is a great picture all in one bed with feet here and um, just the love and the unity. I really appreciated this book and I thought it was really, really sweet. It's an old classic, The Oxcart Man. It talks about his journey of growing things and 
making things and then selling them in the market. Just what life was like back in the early days of America. Wow, Ivy, are you bringing some more down? Oh. Ivy says, don't forget my favorites. I got some more. Huh? Any of these Beatrix Potter books are always favorites. Um, I especially love to get them unabridged if I can. So we have Peter Rabbit, Tom Kitten, Benjamin Bunny, and Jemima Puddle Duck. Here's a newer book that Ben got for the kids, and this one's just talking about diversity and how God's... Ivy wants to read that one. James Harriet's Treasury for Children and the illustrations in this make it an absolute favorite. I mean, look at the detail in these pictures. It's about a man who was a veterinarian, and it talks about different animals that he helped to treat and just follow some of those stories. And so this has been a favorite. The boys love to read this like before bed or before a nap time. They're always asking to read and they have favorite stories in here. But yeah, these illustrations are just unbelievably beautiful. This story, Bears on Hemlock Mountain, is so fun. And I love it because there's actually a lot of similarities to our family. Um, it's about a big family. There's lots of aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews. It talks about this little boy named Jonathan and how he has to go over Hemlock Mountain in order to bring a pot home for his mom to cook dinner in for all of the family members that are coming over. Anyway, on his way back, he hears bears coming and he has to hide under the pot. And so, it's a great story. In the end, he's rescued by his uncles and his dad, but that's just a really fun story. Here's another book that Ben found, and it's called God's Very Good Idea. A true story about God's delightfully different family. And it just highlights diversity and God's design in creating us all different. And yet we're all made in the image of God. And so this is a fun book in Spurgeon. Henry loved this. This is another one from Ben's mom. Story of Ferdinand. About this mellow bull who didn't like to fight. Look. Ivy, do you like Ferdinand? Look. Yeah. Look. Where's Ferdinand? Okay, a few more favorites. Robert McCloskey has some great books, and these are two of our favorites by him. So this one highlights a family of ducks, and they have all these little ducklings, and it's a fun story about parents looking for a place to raise their family, and then raising their little ducklings, and their little journey across town <laughs> all the ducklings lined up in a row and so this is a fun one that our kids love and then blueberries for sal this is another one that ben's mom got for the kids and this one was an instant favorite it's a story about a mom who takes her little daughter to go pick blueberries on a hill and then there's a mom bear who brings her cub to pick berries on the same hill then they end up mixed up and the baby cub is with the mom and the little girl is with the mom bear. And then they're surprised when they discover that they have the wrong child. And so it's a cute little story and absolutely adorable. A little house picture book, Treasury. So it takes a few stories of Laura Ingalls Wilder and her growing up years. And once again, these illustrations are just absolutely gorgeous. They're so fun. And our kids are just captivated by these stories and these tales of going out west and all of their adventures. So, and Almanzo, there's a story about Almanzo in here too. So, super fun. We've tried out a lot of different storybook Bibles and this one has been our favorite. It just, it just highlights from the creation of the world and all the way through the Old Testament, the New Testament. You wanna see it, Ivy? It's very well done. It's very God-centered and very true to the main ideas of the text of scripture. This is a great way to end your day. We'll read one of these before bed oftentimes. The kids love the pictures and it really makes it come to life. It really shows how all of these stories in the Old Testament are pointing towards Christ. So types and shadows of Christ and his future coming. And so I love that it weaves those themes together so well. 
There's that Ben's mom just recently sent a few weeks ago. And so the boys have been loving these Mr. Putter and Tabby book. Mr. Putter's neighbor has a dog. And so they're always doing something fun and having a great time together. Another book that we love is the unabridged original Winnie the Pooh. That one is a classic. Our kids are obsessed with it. And we actually have started getting into audiobooks recently. So if the boys aren't napping over nap time, I'll have them just lay down and listen to an audiobook. And sometimes they'll just listen to them being read like by one person. But other times we'll get them, what's it called? Whenever there's like a lot of different people reading the different characters. So they have like a Winnie the Pooh that they listen to that is narrated by different characters and that's fun. This person just finished listening to Charlotte's Web and so starting to get into that more now that they're the age where they can enjoy more like chapter books. There are different factors that I take into consideration when looking for a good book. One is the quality of the literature. I love to find books that are well written. So a lot of times I'm looking at older books. Oh sister, you're gonna tear it up, sister. I don't want it to be something that's dumbed down. I love it when it's a book that helps to bring up their language skills and something that they can grow into. Some of the board books may be a bit more simple, but I always like to make sure that they are quality books. Charlotte Mason, who was an educator in the last century, she would call books that were dumbed down twaddle. And so we try to avoid twaddle in our house and we don't do it perfectly. Definitely haven't eliminated all twaddle. There's, there's still remnants of that, but as much as possible, we try to choose quality literature. Another thing that I really look for is beautiful illustrations because I love it when a book is beautifully illustrated. Another thing I keep in mind is if, if a child picks a book off the bookshelf and I just absolutely hate that book and I dread it every time they bring it to me because I'm like, ugh, I don't want to read this book. Then I ask myself, why? Like, why do I hate this book so much? Is it boring? Is it dumbed down? Is it like, why do I have this in our bookshelf? I want my kids to love and appreciate good literature. And so some of those books, if I just cringe and I'm like, oh, I hate this book for whatever reason, then I try to figure out why. And if it's just not quality, then I just pass it on. I just get rid of it. So there's no reason in keeping that. There's no reason in torturing myself by having to read that, you know, four times a week or whatever. I try to keep in mind the scripture passage that teaches whatever things are true, lovely, of good report, think on these things. What type of attitudes and things is this book promoting? Is it encouraging good behavior? Is it condoning bad behavior? We wanna see if there is an attitude or somebody being sassy. We wanna see a resolution for that as much as possible. I mean, we're not always rigid about it, but it's always great if there's some sort of resolution there, like maybe the character apologizes or you know recognizes that their behavior needs to be modified in order to be more loving or more kind to people. I don't want my kids being entertained by bratty kids or stories that don't promote the kind of character that I want to see built in their lives. And so, um, yeah, I just try to be selective and choose things that are going to help to build them up. Obviously there are times for using things as a teaching moment. You know, if you have a character in the story with maybe an attitude or <laughs> having a wrong response. Like sometimes that can even be a conversation for afterwards. Like it may not be addressed in the book, but if not, then it's great to have those conversations afterwards. Like, like what should that character have done there and how should they have responded? And how would you respond if you were in that situation? So it can open up a lot of doors for good conversation. If somebody's told me about a book and I'm looking to purchase it, I usually always check thriftbooks.com or Amazon, I'll type it in and then I'll scroll down and click like used books. And so that's a way to save money as well a lot of times because sometimes you can get a seller like Goodwill or something like that where they're selling it for like a dollar or two dollars or something like that. And so it's always good to check used. It's a great way to save money while building your own personal library. So what do you think Ivy? You love books? If you have favorite books that you love reading with your kids, put those down in the comment section below because I'm always looking for more quality books to fill our bookshelves.